I'd say we come over to Koh Lan uh, to do paragliding and paramotoring today and uh, tomorrow as well. We're hoping for some really good weather, some soaring and uh, a couple of really good flights depending on the conditions. Um, as you know that I really believe in safety and Koh Lan is a fantastic place to come and fly. Uh, but will be my first paramotor flight on Koh Lan as well. So fingers crossed, if all goes well, we're going to have a very good day, a uh, very good session tomorrow. And the most important thing is to spend it with my friends and family as well. gonna put my stuff over here and then I gotta go through there so I'm just gonna put this down and I'll come back. Jack! Well obviously taking time out so I have Taking time out with the family is the most important thing for us. We work very hard. We play very hard. Um, one of the key things about um, coming here is that I get to do some really good flying. Um, I'm doing my Para Pro 3 course right now, which is, allows me to paraglide as well as do paramotoring and to share it with my family. Um, for us, I think it's important because we do it as a team rather than individual. And um, for some, some I can be annoying for my wife sometimes, but at the end of the day, we, we are married now for nearly 10 years. And to share this passion that I have allows her to travel, my son to travel, but also allows us as a group to enjoy things that other people don't get to enjoy, like flying and flying as a family. My wife goes up, my son goes up and I go up. It's awesome. That's what being a family is, right? Doing what you can for your family, no matter what. No matter how much pain, no matter how much torture, you do what you can do because it's part of life. And that's why we're here. I torture myself, but I don't know, sometimes the torture can be so worth it uh, to see my kids smile, see my wife smile, and share it as a team, I love it. Uh, it's okay, there's no backfiring, which is what I really want. Um, I had it serviced and uh, David, my really good friend, I told you before, he's my best friend. Um, he changed my spark plug because my spark plug died on one of my flights. And um, 
if you remember, this little thing here was a real nightmare, right? Remember, we put this into the prop. So we replaced both uh, on both engines. This one we've tested now, and um, as long as this wind dies down, it'll be flyable. And uh, the most important thing, I've been trying to get used to the harness position because it's completely different to my nitro. Um, and it seems to be paying off. I'm just trying to test the engine. I want it to start mid-flight if there's an issue. And um, a lot of the problems I get in flight, being an amputee, I have to be careful where I land. It's a really big risk um, if I'm over certain areas when I come into land with an engine out. So to be able to, you know, grab a quick start, which I can't, should be able to. I can't because I can't reach here, it's here somewhere. But basically the the way it works, it makes it allows me to, to do the to do the right thing and get started mid-flight. Obviously when I'm in flight I'll be able to wiggle around in my harness, which will allow me to lean over and um, start the engine. But at the moment the wind is way too strong to fly and incredibly dangerous. Uh, it's just not worth the risk to even pretend that I'm gonna fly. Um, so if you look out on the sea, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but out to sea there's white caps on the, on the water, um, which indicates that the wind's really, really strong and you don't want it to be like that. So anyway, yeah, that's how it is. And now the dog's in the middle road. I'm gonna plonk this down for now because I don't need it right now. Um, the, one of the other thing actually, my max temperature, I want it to be inside 180 degrees. And um, we got max temperature of 128, run on full power for a split second. Really important that it doesn't go above 180. Um, we can sustain 180 for about a minute and then it'll be too dangerous. Um, most likely we'll sh kill the engine completely. So that's how it looks. Um, I don't know if you saw, but you know, it's not, not a light machine. There's people that can't do what I do, like lift it up and put it on their own backs. And I have to do it all on my own. One hand, I can't bend down like other people. So, you can imagine, it's quite, quite a journey. But, you know what I say, no feet, no defeat, right? There's only one empty flyer and that's me. So today I've come over to uh, Fly Colan. Um, this is probably my most favorite place to come to fly, although I've had a real major issue with here because the winds and conditions are so important to fly in. And one of the hardest things is getting the conditions. And to travel down from Bangkok to Pattaya and over the water, to come here to go home and not fly is very depressing but when we get it right it's the most beautiful place in the world it's it's sensational and i've been doing my para pro licenses um, with uh, jeff davidson of uh, fly colan um, and his company glide asia was the guys that helped me get my wing and part of the deal with jeff was when i got my wing i was able to um, continue to do my flyings and learn with him but Jeff doesn't fly paramotors, that's mine. I have already licensed on my paramotor and I've got many, many hours. But with um, the Parapro training, I mean, the conditions out here, if you look, you've got an absolutely huge beach to land on. The skies are wispy and calm and it's the most stunning view in the world. How can you not love life when you've got this as your garden? It's, it's like somebody takes something, it's almost like a painting a picture. And what's good about this is that I come here and I get to fly and see the whole picture being made. And doing that with a paramotor and paragliding, uh, they're two different worlds. You've got the paragliding side of it. There's no noise, there's no buzz from the engine, but you get the whistling on the lines. And then you've got the paramotor, which is a big push, the, you know, the vibration, the thrust. Um, Jeff doesn't like paramotor, he loves paragliding, and I've kicked him up the butt many times about it. Because we have ear defenders, and we can play music, but he's sort of super special. He only wants to do the quiet stuff because he's old. But from my point of view, 
There's only one instructor I'd really want to listen to and that's Jeff, for real. He's one of the best that there is. Well, as if by magic, you wouldn't believe I have actually got Jeff to come onto camera today. Let me introduce the animal that is Jeff. <laughs> Hello, buddy. How, How are you doing? doing? You nice right? to see you. Nice to see you. Cool. Always see you. nice to see you. You are such a liar. <laughs> it's fake. <laughs> You'd imagine that was not real, wouldn't you? <laughs> we do love each other. It's true. It's true. More than life itself. That's not so true. What brings uh, us together is probably the love of flying in all its different forms. There's a massive, uh, uh, I want to say camaraderie, but it's the opposite of what I actually mean, between paramotor pilots and <laughs> free-flying pilots. Um, and we tease each other all the time. We have a good laugh. Um, he loves paramotoring. I love free-flying, it's peaceful, it's quiet. His is noisy and smelly. Um, <laughs> but we have so much fun, we both love this guy. And that's one of the main things that brought us together in the first place. But since yeah. then, the relationship has developed um, onto, onto other areas. Really. Yes, and it still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and humour is also what brought us together. Gareth's sense of humour is um, uh, unparalleled. I've never met anybody like him. Um, yeah, he makes everybody laugh or cry. Depending. Mostly cry. Mostly cry. Mostly cry. <laughs> so Gareth and I met about two years ago, perhaps a bit more. And, yeah, he, um, he came to me and it was apparent from the beginning that he wanted to um, get back in the sky. Obviously, he's got a, a, a career behind him as a commercial airline pilot flying. Triple seven. I thought it was a Piper Cherokee or something. Yeah, that, that was the other one. Oh, sorry, okay. okay. Yeah. Anyway, so he's got a career behind him of, uh, of commercial flying. And um, I found that interesting. I found him as interesting as a person. Um, yeah, and it was, it was basically the, uh, the love of flying that brought us together. Uh, and that's how we met. He asked me about paramotor training, but I think you'd already spoken to David yeah. um, Fabregas, who's a, a cracking paramotor instructor, probably one of the best in Thailand. And he asked us about um, free flying, so we decided um, we would like the challenge of uh, teaching him how to fly paragliders. Um, he's our first, um, and possibly the last, actually, based on this experience, the <laughs> first uh, student who uh, was um, uh, without legs or any kind of physical disability, to be honest. Um, but, and it's been a learning process for both of us, really, um, because we, we've not done it before. So the progress has been slightly slower than normal, um, but it's been a very interesting process, very interesting indeed. Do you see me as disabled? No, and it's really good that you asked me that because it's something I've thought a lot about. You, Gareth, see yourself as um, an inspiration to uh, people with physical disabilities, yeah. but I use you as an inspiration to all people because you are. You are an inspiration to everybody, even even more so to um, what you would call able-bodied people. You know, people are having a bad day, I'll say, look at this guy, look at his power, look at his energy, look at his strength. And, and then you um, show them me as well. And then I show them you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go backwards, go over there. Go that way, go that way. Go towards the edge. Go there, go there. Do, no, move more. Keep going backwards. Trying to sort out my son's kite, and um, okay. he let go of the lines. Here we go. Go back again. And again, right? Wait, wait, go back. Okay. Move the rain, Eddie. It's flying. That's what he does. What's he doing? Jeff's having a great oh, time. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Powerful, isn't it? Look how long the line is, man. How is that supposed to go? <laughs> <laughs> load your lines, load your lines. <laughs> with um, me being an amputee flying over here with you, mm. what's been your hardest challenge? Honestly. Um, keeping you safe. Um, and obviously, like I said before, it's been a learning curve for both of us. And obviously your safety is, is paramount. Um, you know, 
irrelevant of your, your love of the sky. Yeah. You know, everybody loves to be in the sky, but your safety is number one. And that's been the biggest challenge because it's not something that we've done before. And we've learned a lot from you, to be honest. Um, you know, and hopefully there'll be, um, because the inspiration you've given people, you know, in your position, will get more people like you coming here yeah. and, and, you know, and conquering their fears, just the, the same as everybody else. You know, because once you're in the sky, you're no different to anybody else. We're all the same. We all love the sky. Um, yeah. Did you adapt any of your program for, for me? Uh, because you saw me with no legs and automatically the first thing that goes into most people's heads is he's got no legs. Yeah, I mean, obviously that was my first thought. It was like, how could we possibly do this? But what we've done is then we've, we've just taken things a lot slower than normal. Yeah, like um, two years making, slower. Yeah, um, <laughs> and made sure that, you know, both you and, and us as a school are happy with the progress and, and happy with the, the situation regarding safety. I know it's been frustrating. Um, That's an understatement. It's been frustrating and yeah. you have been very unlucky with the weather as well. But um, yeah, that's that's what we've done differently. We've taken things slower than normal, um, just to make sure that you um, stay in one piece. What about when you have trained me and we've we've gone to launches, and there has been the situations like where I've refused to go and take off, even though the weather was good, um, because I wasn't sure about the launch, the position, the angles. Um, obviously, that makes it look like I've got issues with my legs. No, um, no, no, right? Not at all. Quite the opposite, you know. Um, you know, a, a student who can go to a hill and say the conditions are not right for me, and to walk away. Yeah, that's one of the best, best skills that you can have because the last thing that you want to be doing is trying to take off in conditions where you don't feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, your weather window for flying is slightly different to um, uh, other pilots, and the fact that you could walk away and do that is the mm -hmm. best learning exercise that you can get because you get other pilots who put themselves under pressure, they take off when it's not quite right, yeah. and they end up having an accident and hurt themselves. You're here to have fun and enjoy yourself and go home safely to yeah. your lovely wife and, and your kids. Um, so that's the most important. But I still remember my freaking second, second flight. flight. Second flight, yes. Second of a flight straight off the end of the ledge yep. into the trees. Yep, yep, yep. And um, that didn't scare me, you know, a bit, but I think it scared everybody else. Yeah, because, obviously, nobody you know, wants to see that happen. Yeah, but being an amputee as well, I think that they panicked more. I watched them, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they wrecked, obviously, with other people. Uh, that's tandem going off in distance, just so you know. Um, but that's one of the, the issues, you know, I've always wondered, right? Um, how uh, people react from you standing behind me, obviously. You're the guy that is the one has been in my ear for the flights. You're also the guy that is the, the one you need to hear because you, you've got that calming voice. Um, but the reaction from people around you seeing, why well, I always call myself super crippled, don't I? Or, yeah, or yeah. the Terminator. Um, for you, what does it, feel like to know that you actually are the one that's teaching me you're the one that's um i mean you inspired me to fly it by paragliding i didn't want to fly paragliding <laughs> there was a fact I, was, I told you i'd never do it i said to you i'd never do it and i'm doing it yeah I, um, for, for me uh, to be honest it's a pleasure to teach you um it really is it's obviously a challenge as well it's a, it's a new thing for me to teach yeah. you but it's an absolute pleasure to um just to see your energy and your your passion um and it's sort of it's magnified by the situation with your legs and stuff. Um, and what would you do different with me? If you, like we've had two years now, you've known me for a long time, I'm the craziest person you've met. There must be not many people as crazy as me. Um, no, I mean, right. my stupid right. humour is the you're one right. that always sticks out the most. Um, and I've got a drive, you know, that horrible drive where I'm bleeding, you've seen my legs split. Yeah. I've yep. shown you after and my legs are shaking. Yeah. But I still want to carry on uh, and I don't want to stop. And it gets to the point where, you know, very few times I know that we have said I can't do it no more. Very yeah. few times. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, what do you think when you see that reaction? Like I don't want to stop. You know, you know. I know it's not in my interest to carry on, mm. and I know that you're the one who also wants me to stop. And I still sort of get kind of not aggressive, nasty aggressive. But you see me at my worst. You know, when I've had issues with my body. Yep. You know, I've had yep. bleeding and uh, pains in my stomach, pains in my back. And I, you know, I get frustrated, don't I? Uh, yeah. And I want to be up in the sky. Um, I come over, and you, you know, sometimes we all need that little bit of extra kick, that extra motivation. What was it that you would choose to say, like, to somebody in that situation, like that? You know, like that. But 
to be honest, obviously, I've seen you um, sort of down and I've seen you close to quitting and stuff. Not too often, to be honest. You know, it's not any different to, um, to uh, other students. They also get frustrated and stuff. Obviously, you've got quite unique reasons for being frustrated, but, you know, the way I, I helped you, you know, you, when you were up and you were energetic and stuff, you gave me energy and you, you, you inspired me. So it was quite easy actually to, to give that back to you, um, yeah. you know, on the days when you were down and stuff. You know, um, uh, to be honest, I can't remember the words that I used to sort of bring you back and stuff, but you know, it was, it was a reciprocal arrangement, you know, on your, the, the vast majority yeah. of days you were here, you were positive, you were strong, you were fun, you've got your unique sense of humor. And basically, you know, on the days when you weren't, feelings 100% yeah, I just yeah. gave that back to you I seen the pain you were in and it actually you know there was times when I wanted to tell you to stop that you mentioned before yeah um, but you kept on going and you know most of the time I just I just let you even though you're in pain you're bleeding and stuff like that but yeah I basically just gave you the energy back that you give to me and it was quite easy to be honest it wasn't difficult at all I do think that. that you know this whole flying thing regardless of um what type of flying you do, right? I mean, there's so many different types of flying, but you do do as a team. And without the team, you aren't able to really complete any goal. You do need everyone around you regardless. Um, so, yeah, just... Yeah, we do have a great team here. We've got Adun, who's our chief flying instructor. Yep. We've got Super Jack, who does everything. everything. And yeah, flies, he teaches, he drives, he does everything. And we get a lot of visitors here as well from different parts of the world and they bring energy and fun. We have other students, we have experienced guys coming. Yeah. Um, and it's one big fat melting pot of uh, crazy yeah. ass people. Okay, so today um, the wind forecast is looking good. The wind at the moment is not very good, but it looks like it's improving. So today Gareth's going to fly. Yay. Hopefully we're going to do some free flying, um, some soaring. Um, in about half an hour or so once the wind comes a bit more straight um, and later on we might actually be doing some paramotoring as well. Um, it's the next step in, in Gareth's training, more soaring, get higher, we'll do some exercises with him about um, different things, speed bar, big ears, but hopefully we'll get him in the sky and bring him back down on the ground safely in one piece. That's the plan. If my legs fall off it will be two pieces. Three. Three. Yeah, <laughs> three. <laughs> Okay, so the next step of all this is prep, and prep is the most important part of flying. Flying's flying. Once you're up, you've got to come down. But if you get your preparation wrong um, and skip steps, something catastrophic can happen. Uh, there, is, there is no skipping steps. You go from top to bottom. It's the same in a, in a cockpit. You, know, you, you scan the instruments left to right. Um, it is so important to prep, and today's conditions so far are showing to be Right at this time, a little bit too, too extreme, but maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it will start to calm down. And with the wind as a little bit calmer than this, we should get a basic 20 minute flight in. Because um, I'm soaring, I'm not doing top to bottom. Top to bottom is, is not more than five minutes, if, if that. But um, soaring, we try and stay above the ridge as long as we can, until Jeff basically tells me I'm not allowed to be up any longer or he wants to go home. I want to fly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and hopefully Jeff, maybe, which will be a first, will fly alongside me, yep. um, which will be really cool. Um, instructor and student together. I'd love to see that one day, even if we don't see it today, it'd be great to fly with Jeff. Because um, being taught by him is a privilege, but to actually fly and share the sky with him would be an honor. So, you know, Ampu Flyer and an idiot together, perfect. Match made in heaven. Yeah. So today I'm obviously um, doing some ground handling. We've been waiting for the wind to die down. An extreme cost of pain to my legs and um, bleeding, uh, a little bit of torture. But ground handling is the most, like the most fundamental thing that there is to flying because in the air, flying is flying, it doesn't change. Flight will not change position just because, you know, you're in the sky. It's nothing's going to change that. However, the ground handling allows you to make mistakes on the ground so that in the air you don't make them. It's like um, practice, get it in your head over and over again. The more practice you make, the less errors you make, right? Basically, you're trying to fly without flying. So you're using the power of the wing, leaning into the wing, loading the A's up. It's all about practice, feeling it, not just control. So you're yeah, talking to a camera, not many people can do that. But then I want to launch, so I would 
Yeah, yeah, so it gets a run up, yep. Just in case you need an extra kick. Okay. Okay, ready. Come on, wind, give me a little bit more. Push me forward. Push me forward. Oh, well, I was probably thinking I fell in the f***ing thing. Can you feel my toes? I was lifting getting on the end of my toes. So that first one, my toes were on the edge and I couldn't get a flat foot. So we need to get back up. Just go again. That's better. So go a bit further. I'll try and go further back, mate, and get a bigger. So I get a bit more area. Keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running. Awesome kickoff, guys. Awesome. Super. Relax. Look around. Look around you. Take the turn to your right. Take the turn to your right. Weight shift over. Gentle, gentle on the brakes. Nice little bit of a uh, bit of uh, turbulence there. Just uh, using the ridge right now. A bit further out this time. Don't want to go over the top because I need to keep my lift. What we're trying to do is use as much of the area as I can. Okay, make a nice turn. There's not behind me and around me. Let's make the turn. The guys are getting plenty of lift and I'm getting plenty of uh, beautiful air time here. And uh, it's a nice bit of lift there. So uh, that's what's really nice about paragliding. It's amazing, you don't need an engine to push after all. Although I thought, you know, being a paramotor pilot, I would get a bit complacent about that. Get my arms up a little bit here, because I need to ride it out. Change my angle a little bit here. So right now I'm just going to move away from the ridge of fraction because I was getting blown a bit too much. That's it, should get some sink in a minute. The lift bubble is about complete and there goes the sink. It's very nice uh, conditions here. I've got a lovely bit of lift off of this ridge and pulls right underneath me. A pull down there is on a Flow Cosmos. Uh, he's on the ENB, I'm still on my A. Get a bit closer so I'm going to do a change my angle of fraction. Oh, beautiful view, look at that all around. 
So this is like um, radio tower here. Uh, lovely, lovely flying. Nice control, soaring. Jeff there is gonna take up another passenger. A quick look at my carabiners. Everything's looking good. Get a lift again. Oh, I can see. Hello. The wind up there is dying really fast. Yeah, it was, it was. I was actually starting to lose, just I wasn't really gaining anything. I was just, I was sinking really. That's that's thing. What I was finding, that if you watch, I was kicking my legs. I was trying to get myself shoved forward. Yeah. And yeah. I haven't got the weight under my legs. Yeah. So I can feel myself doing a bit of everything. And then I feel off balance. Mm. It's, a, it's definitely not the truth. Like, I don't mean it's all about that, but what starts to happen is it gets in your head. Yeah. And I start to feel like I'm losing my balance a tiny bit. Yeah. And I don't, you know, but I'm happy. I think Origin was fine. Oh, you're fine. Perfect. Not, not, not at all. Take off was good. I, did, I was did there, but push? I didn't have to touch it. Because yeah. I, I mean, the, the direction, we were a bit all over the place of direction, but it was okay. There was enough lift there to look happy. And in terms of uh, pain threshold, landing, how's that? Not thought about it now. That comes later. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's too much adrenaline. It's not adrenaline. It's just, uh, it's just nice to get the flight in. waited long enough to fly. Yeah, yeah. So from that side, it's nice to get the flight in. Um, from personal side, uh, yeah, I guess the pain threshold is pretty. It's getting there. It's kicking in now. So um, what? Uh, eight or nine? That's no, 10. nearly a ten. You see, um, my legs are starting to shake now, so the um, pain's pushing through the bottom of my stomach. This was a big worry um, when I was just after takeoff. Mm. Um, the initial one where I couldn't get my foot. Yeah. Um, this still sunk down, like, like can I pull it back up. But because it sinks down, it gives it a push down as well. If I don't get it, and I can't, like, I'm actively flying. Yeah, so I can't just <laughs> around and pull it and everything. Because I don't want to, you know, while I'm not comfortable, right? it's new to me still. So, yeah. um, I'm just trying to adapt myself to fly. But I was worried, I weren't sure if it was off or on. Mm -hmm. Like, when I came into land, I was really, really not sure. Watch your feet.
Yeah, so this is my wife and my two sons here. Um, probably everything in my life boils down to this moment, being with my family. Um, my wife doesn't follow me everywhere, by the way, with, with my flying, um, but she definitely is part of the part of the start of it. And um, fly Colan and I think she's here. So, book. Yeah. What do you think? Scared. Scared of what? Of him. Got accident. Why are you scared? Of that? Why are you smiling when you say that? That sounds really cool. Well, actually, I'm scared because um, <clears throat> for me, I think it seems like um, still dangerous, but I, um, I'm confident in him too. I think he can do it. He always try no matter what. So I think he, he will succeed what he do. Oh, you're so lovely. Yeah. That was so staged by you too. I Deep know. down, you, you just want to say to me, jump off a cliff. No, no, no. Yeah, we do um, most of the <laughs> traveling to Kolan is together um, because they get a holiday and I get to fly. And I think that everything starts with what you see in front of you right now. This is everything to me. It's my family. It means everything to me. We lost our daughter when she was born. Um, his big sister and his bigger sister. And my little boy has got Down syndrome, right? And for me, everything in my life is what my daughter can't achieve and what he may never achieve. Um, family is everything. To me, the work I do, the pressure I put myself under, the things I create, the effort involved in going to work, the effort involved in playing in the pool, the effort involved in sharing these situations, the effort involved in doing these little documentaries, these travel things. Do you know what that I just said to you was a complete lie? There is no effort involved. Do you know why? I do it for this lady here. I do it all for my family. Love is the reason for everything. And it, high five? Five. High five. Beep. High five. Punch. <laughs>